Okay, so hi everyone, and thank you for coming. So I'm Nicolas Dandrimon from the Debian Project, and this is Pierre-Yves Pierre Chibon from the Fedora Project, and we're going to talk to you about FedMessage. So, how to see your project pulse in real time with FedMessage. So I'm going to introduce the FedMessage project by um, talking to you about the problem with distribution infrastructure. So. The services that we have in our distributions are a bit like people. You have dozens of services developed by many people. Each service has its own way of communicating with the whole world and with the rest of the project. So each and every service that needs to communicate and to interact with the rest of the project, which is basically every single service, needs to implement a bunch of communication systems. So for instance, in the Debian infrastructure, we have uh, our archive software, so which is called DAC, which uses mostly emails to communicate with the external world and stores its data in a Postgres database. So the metadata is available in an RFC uh, 822 format, so it's like uh, an email. There is no real API for this service. The DB is not, the database is not public either. When I build, which is the infrastructure we use to build packages, uh, pulls the database every few minutes, every 15 minutes, I think, to know what needs to be rebuilt. No API outside of its database, which is closed too. The bugs, our bug tracking system, works via email, and only email. It stores in its data in flat files with indexes, and it exposes a read-only SOAP API. Uh, the SCM pushes in the distro-provided repos, which live on Aleos, can trigger an IRC bot, but basically every single packaging team is free to do whatever they want uh, with their pushes. There is, no, um, there is no central way of notification for new commits, for instance. Before FedMessage, the Fedora infrastructure was pretty much the same. So uh, in the packaging pipeline, you upload a package, you want, it, you want to get it built, you want to get it installed on mirrors, etc., etc. Everything was done manually. I mean, uh, either a developer does the trigger to rebuild the package, or some ad hoc hooks were built into the systems to trigger the next step in the pipeline. It was not really maintainable. If you want to insert something in the pipeline, you have to modify the previous service, the next service, and, well, it's a pain. So in Debian, we have some clutches that are available to try and uh, sidestep this problem. So the ultimate Debian database is a snapshot of a lot of the databases used in the Debian infrastructure at any given time. Even some Ubuntu bits are stored in there. So this works by a lot of cron-triggered importers, which run in, I think, some run every day, some run every 15 minutes, it depends. So you're not really sure w at what point the data was available uh, and was uh, fetched. So it's useful for distro-wide QA, where you can cross-reference between uh, bits and pieces of your infrastructure, not so much for real-time updates. <coughs> That's not what I want to do. Uh, the package tracking system is a package-centric view of uh, stuff that is going on in the Debian infrastructure. So you have cron-triggered updates on source packages. You can also send mails to the system to update it. The messages that the system sends, however, are not um, not uniform. So you can't really uh, use the system for notification because you need to parse emails, basically. And you, for every single action, you need to parse a different email. It's not really real-time either, because the importers can run either real-time or via cron. So a proposed solution to this problem of real-time notification in distribution infrastructure is FedMessage. So FedMessage, the federated message bus, 
was introduced in 2009 by Jess Jesse Keating, and it's a unified message bus which reduces the coupling between the services of your distribution infrastructure. Basically, what you can do is you can subscribe to message topics to register callbacks on certain events that happen in your distribution. So what can you get almost for free? Uh, the Fedora guys have built a big ecosystem of tools around FedMessage. Uh, Pierre-Yves will present most of that uh, in the second part of the talk. So you get a stream of data representing activity in your infrastructure. You decouple your interdependent services because you can register uh, at any given point in the chain of packaging. You can register uh, to, uh, to run callbacks. You get a, notifi a, no a pluggable notification system, which was built recently. You can get an achievement system that is built atop of this uh, notification bus. You get live dashboards of events. You get IRC feeds of all the activity in your uh, distribution. You get uh, real-time messaging accounts that get banned because they flood. So how does it work? So the first implementation of FedMessage uses Cupid. So a central broker which took messages in from all the services in the distribution and sent them out to the, subscri to the subscribers uh, to the messages. The issue with this is that you get a single point of failure in your central broker. And in the Fedora experimentations, at least, the brokers weren't really reliable. So uh, the, Cupid, uh, the Cupid services had a tendency to tip over and, and crash. So actually, the bus is implemented used using 0MQ, uh, which publi with published subscribe sockets. So there is no broker, which means that every service that needs to, sends, to send messages to the bus uh, has to open a socket, a published socket, and every service that wants to listen to the events can subscribe to that socket. So, there is no central broker and the performance is really better. So, there are some issues with this approach. For instance, you don't have any uh, means of um, service discovery because, well, you you don't know uh, who has a socket open to uh, to publish messages. So you can write a broker which gives you back your single point of failure. You can use DNS or you can distribute a text file across your infrastructure and you can publish it. So Fedora uses this text file uh, system because uh, there are um, how to say, their infrastructure is really integrated and uh, managed uh, at a single point. Uh, during Google Summer of Code, uh, the Debian student for FedMessage uh, implemented the DNS discovery uh, mechanism. So uh, you can uh, use SR SRV records to uh, register endpoints. Uh, one thing I didn't, uh, I didn't write in my slides is that there is an issue of reliability because you are not sure when you're a sender that every single uh, subscriber has received the message that you sent. So during this Google Summer of Code, uh, the Debian student implemented on top of the current FedMessage uh, implementation a message replay system which means that if a receiver notices that some messages were missed, he can ask the sender to resend the messages. So you don't, well, when you do, um, for instance, when you notify on your desktop uh, events about your packages, you don't need reliability because if you miss a message, uh, nobody will, well, you don't really care about it. But if you want to queue builds for packages, for instance, you don't want to lose messages. So you can, if you need it, uh, add some reliability to this system. So now, how can we use this thing? Well, so the topology, this is the topology of the Fedora de deployment 
of fed message. So on the left are all the services that send uh, messages to the bus. And on the right are all the consumers that are implemented inside Fedora infrastructure. So uh, for instance, the notification system is on the right uh, behind, uh, I think, the Fed message hub. Yes, notifications are down there, etc., etc. So how can we find our way inside this, uh, this bus? So I said that you can subscribe to message topics. So um, Basically, this is a reverse, uh, a reverse DNS name, where you have uh, your distribution at the beginning, then the environment in which the message is sent. So you can have a staging bus where you put your services that aren't ready for prime time. The service, so for instance, uh, you can have Koji, which is uh, the um, the build system uh, in Fedora, uh, Mentos or Dash or uh, anything. The Bugzilla. Yeah, Bugzilla, uh, the BTS, etc., etc. Uh, this service sends events about objects. So an object is a package, a user, a, a tag, uh, a commit, for instance. And this object has an event. Uh, so a verb, like uh, you updated the package, so you get package.update, or uh, a build as completed, so you get koji.build.complete, for instance. So you can have sub-objects if, uh, well, object is package, you have a package build that is completed, so you can, you can, so you can subscribe to wildcards, so you can subscribe to all the messages that concern an object. You can subscribe to all the messages that are sent by a service or to everything if you if you want to. So publishing messages is really simple because basically everything, uh, every um, bit of intelligence in the system is stored in the configuration files. So you import from Python, you import the fed message module and you type fedmessage.publish in a certain topic and a message which is a Python dic dictionary. From the shell, you can use fedmessage logger, which can take a JSON input or a raw text input if you, if you want it. And every, everything gets sent on the bus. Receiving messages is pretty simple too. So uh, you load the configuration, then you have a tail messages command that can uh, fetch the messages one by one and run a command on this. So on top of that, you have some goodies. Uh, every message, so the bus is completely open, which means that everyone, um, everyone everywhere can subscribe to the bus and receive messages. How, um, so there is no password, there is no, uh, there is no encryption, there is no anything, but you have some cryptographic message signing, which means that the messages are signed by the sender. So you can authenticate the sender, either using X509, uh, so T SSL, or GNU PG, which was uh, a crypto backend implemented by, uh, by, by Simon Chopin uh, during uh, Google Summer of Code. And as I said, you have a replay mechanism, which means that you can replay messages if uh, you missed if you missed a step. So uh, that's about it for the technical part of the talk. So if there are any questions about this, feel free to ask. Yes. So the question is, uh, how are the changes in um, in sc 
schema handled in the system. So uh, actually, uh, on top of fed message, uh, each uh, project that sends messages uh, provides a metadata uh, module which you can load inside fed message and which knows how to decode messages. So uh, basically, it provides an API to um, to find out, to find out, for instance, what the user, uh, f which is the source of the event, um, is, uh, the email addresses uh, that are in the message, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can use directly the JSON data that is uh, sent in inside the bus, or you can use this uh, metadata uh, which is provided alongside fed message to uh, to decode the messages uh, using a stable API. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, the metadata, as far as I know, is only uh, is, is yeah. There's only a Python module. Uh, I I think most most of the services that use it uh, are written in Python. So yeah, this this is what makes most sense. Uh, So another question is uh, whether it is possible to write an introspection API. Uh, I don't think the issue has arisen yet, so I don't think we have thought about it. At least I didn't. So that's a <laughs> that's a good uh, that's an so interesting. So the question would be like you received a message and then what kind of you have the. So the service. So So the question is. Uh, so, so, the, so the question is basically, when you actually query uh, one of the service, can you actually ask the service to send you the metadata about itself? Uh, you basically cannot because the service doesn't know these metadata. The, all the service knows is it's sending messages at some point, and these these messages are going to follow this pattern, and that's it. So there is no the the. the the translation between the raw meta that the raw message, the raw topic, into a human readable description explaining what the message was about is only in the metadata package outside. So and that's also on the on the question on how do we handle changes? Well we handle changes by updating this metadata package um, but the system is smart enough that if it encounters a message that it cannot translate into a human, then it's just going to say, Well, I received that message with this information but I don't know what to do with it. So it's not going to break anything if you add if you add new service if you add new topic and you don't have the the latest version of the metadata it's not going to break anything but you're just not going to have the, the nice human readable description that user foo updated package bar. Yes. Oh, yeah. So the f the feedback was that uh, there are some there are a lot of rough edges uh, if you try to use the system outside of uh, distributions. Uh, some things are hard coded inside the code. For instance, the um, the environment uh, the environment uh, kinds so dev staging and production. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, please do report the bugs that you find. <laughs> Yeah, but so please. I, I have two things on that. The first thing is definitely come talk to us. Yeah. And the second thing is the Debian and the Fedora infrastructure are running it. And but well, we no. <laughs> well, the Debian is partly. He's a, he's a Debian yeah. system administrator. <laughs> well, so we're trying. We're, <laughs> we're trying to push you to do it. But, <laughs> the, but it's actually we're not the only two running it. There is there is actually a governmental pr project hosted by the French government who actually also uses fetch messages on the. On the Underlying the database, it's, um, it's the open data uh, platform, which uh, actually can subscribe and uh, send events about the new data sources and updates. Uh, so everything. So yeah, you can. But come and talk if, to us. if you have, please do come. Do come if you're interested. Do come to us, and yeah. there is no problem. Uh, we will make sure that these changes are configured and are configurable <laughs> and are documented. There's yeah. definitely no problem in there. 
Shall I start to show you all the, oh, we have one last question now. Is the Fed message uh, only for the Fedora uh, distribution or also for different operating systems? So uh, currently we have... Question, the question. Yeah, so the question is uh, whether um, FedMessage is Fedora specific or if it works on other operating systems like Windows or, uh, I don't know. Uh, so I'm not actually sure that anyone tried to run it outside of Linux. I actually do think there is some, I've seen it somewhere in the code that there was check if it's a Linux or Windows platform. Yeah, so but it's I don't know how supported or tested that is. Yeah. But it's basically Python. It's written over the ZMQ. Yeah. C or C++ library. Yeah, it's a PyZMQ, so it's uh, it's on top of the C library for so ZMQ. FedMessage itself should be, if you can run Python, you should be able to run FedMessage. And if you can install ZMQ, then you should also be able to run FedMessage. After yeah. that, yeah, we didn't try it. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. But yeah. So if if it doesn't work, uh, well, please try it. And if it doesn't work, please report the bug, and we'll look into it definitely. So now I'm going to start with now that you actually know what Fed message is. I'm going to show you a bit like everything that we built around it, and that's something which I have been personally a lot playing with. Uh, so Let's maybe click. Yeah, there it goes. So the environment. So at the moment, I could count about 14 apps. And that's the one which I was aware about. So there are probably more which I just didn't know. And it's a growing number, pretty much an everyday growing number, because every other day I have an idea of, oh, wait, we can do that with this information that we have. The, the, the interesting thing is that we can do system integration. So that has already been partly presented. I'm going to come back on that a bit, giving some example. We have a central communication channel, because since all our applications are actually sending messages on the bus, then if you actually want to trigger a reaction, you have just to listen to the bus and act upon uh, the message you receive. One of the most interesting things for me was that actually fed messages give us a way, and with the application that we built around it, it gave us a way of seeing the history of, the, of our community. So we actually have stored in a database all the message that have been sent over the bus since October 2012. So the, the bus itself is older, but the database was only the service that stored the message was only applied in October 2012. So we have the history of all the action that occurred in the community since October 2012. So that gives us a lot of cool data that we can play with, and I've been playing with that for the last few days already. And of course, that since we have the data, then we can get some nice graph and do some statistics. And then, of course, we have some secret plans and cool stuff that I will also show you. Please don't mention that on YouTube or anything. So on the system integration, I just have two, two small examples. Uh, we have some more examples, sorry. We have the FAS, which is the Fedora account, account system. And we have one of the, the, the group in, in Fedora is the ambassador group, who goal is to promote and go to the events and talk to you. So if you go to the Fedora booth, you're going to see Fedora ambassadors. And when you become an ambassador, you actually have to apply on the group in FAS. And then there is a track on the Federal Hosted project where you have to, to create a, a ticket. And that was a long and boring procedure where you had to apply on the group and then go on the track and create a ticket. And then the mentor would contact you and review the ticket and review your application. And you know, it's, it's long and boring. And if you're an ambassador and you're a newcomer to a community, you want to make the step as simple as possible. So what they did is they basically created a small listener on the Fed message that listened to all the message. And then when there is a message from FAST that says that user foo applied to the group ambassador, it just take that, it just reacts upon that message and just automatically create the ticket on the track system. And then the mentors are aware from the track. So it's very simple, fast to track. You apply to the group, I create the ticket on the other side. Next to that, we have the Koji Stalker. So that was, uh, I'm actually not sure it's still running anymore, but that was back in the days where the ARM platform in Fedora was still considered as secondary, secondary architecture, which means that when you were building a project on Fedora, it was built on x86, x86 and 64, but not on ARM. Now that ARM has been promoted to a primary architecture, when you build something, it's built on ARM as well as the traditional platforms. So at the time, it was not the case. The Koji Stalker was basically like, I'm listening to the bus, and every time someone builds something and the build is successful, then I'm just starting a build in the Koji branch of the ARM, uh, of the, in the ARM branch of Koji. 
So that's every time you have an update to the traditional architecture, you would get an, you would get a build in the R platform, and you would get if that failed, you would get an email as the maintainer like your build worked in the traditional platform, but it's not working on ARM. Next to that, we have the central communication system. So then we can actually give some people a bit uh, ideas of what's going on in the community. So there has been some applic application written like the, the Fedora News, which is a small just HTML5 and JavaScript. It's aimed to be, to be accessible on your mobile. And it just gives you like what are the latest builds which have been made and what are the latest updates which, are made, 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 rep, which have been made available, uh, what are the latest posts on the planet, and this kind of information. So it's just something like you're, on, you're at home, you can just reload the information, you go on the bus, you can read the planet, you can check what are the builds, the updates, and everything. We have a desktop notification application, which also comes with a Google Shell, a GNOME Shell uh, extension, which just where you can actually f set a number of topics and filters and just say, well, I want actually to have a pop-up on, on my desktop that tells me every, every time there is something happening in one of my package. Or I'm very interested to know what's happening in the kernel development. So I actually want to check out what's, what are the Fedora guys doing with, on the kernel package. And then every time the Fedora guys are doing something on the kernel package, then you get a notification. Something else that I was telling you about is the history of the community. So we have, this, um, we have one application which is called Data Nomer, whose goal is simply I'm listening on the bus, and everything which I see, I put in a database. And on the top of that database, we have Data Gripper. And Data Gripper is simply a JSON API to the fetch message history. So if you want to know what are the last, the last bills, what are the last updates, what are the last posts on the planet, you can just go there and query everything. It's, you have a fairly nice documentation. You can ask uh, all the message uh, over the last 24 hours. You can ask all the message between two distinct dates. You can ask all the message for one certain topic or another one. So it's, I've been playing a lot with it. It's, you can really get some nice number and nice some stat statistics about that. And this is actually uh, an estimation of the actual count of message. The, at that time, we had some, some problems to get the actual number. And I think now we fixed it. So we have a bit more than uh, 1 million 500 messages uh, over the last year, 500,000. So using the, the history, then actually we can actually do some statistics. So this is something which is simple and which I believe you can't really read. Uh, so there is a cron job that runs on my machine and that basically every week, every Monday at 10, at 10 o'clock, gets retrieve all the message from the previous week. And then from all these messages, it just presents you an idea of, OK, how many builds has there been last week? How many is that compared to the week before? How many people created an account on FAST? How many badges were given? How many updates were pushed? How many people tag on Fedora Tagger? And then it just basically outputs this SVG graph, which is barely readable. And basically, we show you the trends for the different categories of yeah, how many packages were built, how many. Sorry. Um, yeah. Hey, colors. <laughs> Uh, so that, can, that even gives me to the next point, which I was hoping to be able to do. Uh, you have some nice graph lines, some very nice line, and then around here, in the middle, you have a big dip, and that's simply because at that time we didn't have any nudges check whether the bus was running or not, and the bus went down for one week, and nobody noticed until we actually <laughs> was wondering, like, hey, wait a minute, we haven't seen anything for a week, and we went and realized that the bus was off. <laughs> Uh, so there is now a not just check that says, well, wait a minute, I haven't seen any message for an hour or two, and that's not normal. I think we're going to turn the lights back on. Uh, see us. Yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing on the, the stacks on the community is that we have package maintainer, and package maintainer come, and sometimes then go. And when they go, they don't necessarily say that they are leaving, or they have a package which they pushed into the, the repositories and then, you know, times goes on and bugs accumulates and they try to do the update and the update doesn't, doesn't work and they lost interest in the package. So what they do is that they are fun it. But eventually there are also packages depending on it and if they are fun it and they don't announce it, then suddenly you have a broken chain of dependency between your packages. So there is this, it's again just a simple cron, cron job that runs every week 
and that checks, well, what happened over the last week regarding to package ownership chains. How many people, how, has there been packages which were offhand? So this is the email from the, 20, the 20th of January. There was one package of offhand over the last week. There were 12 packages that were un -orphaned. So people that found orphan package and I saw, oh, wait a minute, I need it. So I'm just going to pick it up. And then at the bottom, you also have packages which were retired. So not only they were orphan, but they saw that they were not interesting to keep around at all. So they were just retired. And then there is also the list of packages that just change ownership. So someone orphaned it and then someone else picked it up during that week. So you don't have to go, if you see it in that list, well, eventually it's already picked up, so it's actually not in that list, but then in the ownership change directly. And this is actually pretty nice because that's arrive in the devil list every Monday. And then people start to read it and realize like, wait a minute, why was this package orphan? And why wasn't it announced? And wait a minute, I need it for that and that features. And what am I going to do with it? So it's something which was fairly simple to write. And but it has actually brought a lot of discussion on the community on, OK, wait, what are these changes? And why are they here? And how can we go around that or deal with it? So it's something simple, but you know, it helps, uh, helps on the community. And then there are some more. So I've been playing with the, the, all the data from Datanomer. And then the idea was like, we have our about 14,000 14, packages in Fedora. And what, when was the last time that they all built? When was the last time that we tried to build them all and then that they actually did build? So what I did is that I basically took all the package in Fedora and then I, I queried Data Gripper and I, I, I asked him, well, give me the last build of this package that was successful. And then I keep the date and then I say, well, compared to the date of the day I ran the script, how many days ago was the package re successfully rebuilt? And then you realize that a number of them are just, you know, been rebuilt uh, nicely. And then here we have a big peak. That's because once in a while in Fedora, we have what we call mass rebuild. So it's basically we take all our packages and we just rebuild them whole. And then more surprisingly is that before the mass rebuild, we actually have a number of packages here who did not build successfully since the last mass rebuild. And the last mass rebuild was about something like 130 days ago. So that's already almost four months. And nobody touched them. They were built or tried to be built during the mass rebuild, and they, that didn't work. And nobody built them since. So these are actually packages which might be worth looking into, as in, what, what is the package you're doing? Is the package really maintained? Is there a problem on the package? Is there something looking into it? Or is it just something which is laying around and nobody cares about it? And then the question becomes, OK, do we want to keep something that doesn't build anymore around if nobody cares about it? it what please. Are the of the so the, um, the numbers here, I had to actually uh, look. This is a log scale. This is a log scale because I had to normalize the data. Otherwise, you would have seen a very small uh, line at the, at the bottom and then something big. So this is on the on the y-axis. It's a log scale. On the x-axis, it's the the number of days since the day I, between the day I run the script and the day the package successfully rebuilt. Uh, this is all on my blog. I'm going to make some shameless advertisement here. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you go on the blog.pingrate.fr, basically you have the the graph with the original numbers and the log scale. But I only put the log scale here for visibility, basically. On the same ID, uh, we have a number of people in the packager group. So the packager group are the people who can actually commit on packages and change the, the spec file and then trigger rebuild and make an, up an, an update. So we have about uh, almost 1,500 packager. But then uh, the question is, uh, when was the last time they were active? When was the last time that they actually did something on fed messages? Did they, you know, did a build, update a wiki page? Did, a, did an update, or you know, when was the last time they actually did something on, on, on the bus? So what I did is that I just simply took this 1500 username and I asked on Data Gripper, well, what, when was the last action of that person? And how many days ago was that? And then you end up, again, the, we have the, the, the log scale on the, on the X, and then on the Y, on the, sorry, the log scale on the Y, and on the X, I says the n number of days. 
And what you realize is that we actually have a fair amount of people which are in the packager group that didn't do anything for the last 100 days or more. So people who didn't do anything in Fedora for three months. So maybe that's fine. Maybe they, they're, they're just on holiday or they're just watching the package and there is nothing to do. Maybe there are people that have left and did not announce so. Or because that's also something that we have to be careful in that graph is that we don't remove people from the packager group. Even if they leave, we normally don't block account and we don't remove them. So there might actually be people that have left the project, said so, and that are not maintaining package anymore. But that's something which we should make sure. Because that's also something like we have, we actually have people, we have uh, 300 people, I think, who don't have any action recorded in Data Gripper. So they didn't do anything in Fedora since October 2012. So it's fine if they, are, they have just left the project and they don't maintain any package anymore officially. But if this rendered pa packager here st are still maintaining packages officially, that means that there is basically no one or they are not the one doing the work. Somebody else is doing, them for, doing it for them. So it, it, you know, it gives us a small idea of how active our group of packager is and how active the, how maintained our package, our software collection is. Then we have something which is part of the cool stuff. We have badges. So the idea is that basically it's, it's a game. It's a, it's a community building tool. It's a game. It's spot, don't laugh. You're going to get a badge for that one. And he's the one that had the ID. So, uh, and he's not listening, of course. So the idea is simply like you, you perform an action in the community and the, the action triggers a message on the bus and then we have something that listens to the bus that applies a number of filters, creates data gripper for the history and then if you did one edit on the wiki, then you get one badge. If you get 10 edits on the wiki, you get another badge. If you get 100 edits on the wiki, you get a third badge. And then you see people starting editing sentence one letter by one letter to actually get to the 100 badge. That's a side effect. <laughs> but you also get people into, uh, I have made my 100 successful build in Koji. Congratulations. And then you end up with uh, five minutes. Is there a badge for this talk? Uh, there is not a badge for this talk. But you can, con you can give the ID and you get a badge for giving the idea of giving a badge. So <laughs> awesome. <laughs> There is a first M badge. Yes. Oh, you, you just spoiled my last slide. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so all you need to for the badge is, is a fast account. You don't even need to sign the, the contributor license agreement. You just need a fast account. And, but it's going to be a bit harder if you don't have, if you're not actual contributor to Fedora to actually get it to the top 10 because, yeah, you know. <laughs> so, and this is actually working. You see people coming in. You see people asking, like, what should I do? To, to get badges. One of the most easy applications that we have to get badges is called Fedora Tiger. And the idea is that you have a random package which is part of these 14,000 packages that we have, and you can tag it. You can give it a name. So if you have the kernel, then we just tag it kernel. You can, you can tag it Linus Torvald. And if you tag, if you tag one, one package with a new tag, you get a badge. If you vote for the first time on a, on a tag that exists, you get, a tag, you get a badge. If you tag 100 package, you get a badge. If you tag 500, once up to, I think the limit is 1,000. And we have had people tagging 1,000 packages to get badges. But for us, it's actually very useful because these tags are actually then used when you do a search. When you're interested to find out about a dive log program, and then if people actually tag the software called Subsurface with dive log, well, this tag is actually going to help us giving you the right result, the one you're looking for. So this is actually, you know, it's a win-win situation. You get a badge, but we get the goodies. So we actually make you work for us, and but you get a badge for it, so that's cool. <laughs> so, and there is 7,000 users which are registered and who are getting badges on badges today. So mm -hmm. I expect to be, it to be about 8,000 by the end of this talk about. And of course, yeah, you're welcome to log in into and look into that. Mm -hmm. On the other cool stuff, well, that was already half spoiled by Nicolas. Yes. Uh, we have the Fed message notification system. And the idea is that, indeed, the, all the messages are going in the bus and, you know, we have a number of tools in our uh, infrastructure and they all send emails. And we have like the, the package DB application, which I'm currently rewriting, so I can bash about it, uh, where every time you actually ask for something, so there is the, the, it's the, it manages who is allowed to do what on which packages. 
and on which branch. So you can actually get commit rights on the Fedora 18 package, but you don't get it on the Fedora 20 package, on the, and vice versa, of course. And every time, the, on the current package DB, every time you ask for one right on one package on one branch, you get an email. So if you have suddenly a friend of yours who is asking for the commit rights on all the package on all the branch, well, you get about 200, 400, depends how many emails and how many packages you have. But basically, you, you get three emails per branch for one package because we have three, three major ACLs, four major ACLs, and you get one email per each ACL per branch for one package. So the idea is that the new version of PackageDB is not going to send any email. The new version of PackageDB is only going to send message on the bus. And then what you can do is that you arrive on, on the notification system, and then you already have a number of default uh, notification filters which are in place, and you can tweak them. You can say, well, actually, I, I want to know about everything which is happening to my package, but I don't want to have it on email. I actually want to have it on IRC. When I, have, when, I, when I build a package on Koji, I'm actually very interested to know if it worked. But I don't, I don't really care about it. If it worked, it worked, and it's great. So I want to know it. So just send me an IRC message. But if it failed, I actually want to be able to keep that in my mailbox and go back to that and get the log the day after. So I don't want to have the, the, the notification in, in IRC, but I want to have the notification by email. When I get a badge, when I, when I uh, made it to the top 10 of the, the Fedora Badges pr project. When I get the first place on Fedora Badges, I actually want to have it on my phone because it's so cool. I want to know it. And because someone else might take the place right in two minutes, so I still want to know it soon. Then I can tweet it, and then <laughs> uh, it's too late. <laughs> so the, the, the Fedora not notification system works currently with IRC, email, and your phone. Android only, sorry. And we actually had a request yesterday that I want to be able to tweet so the, the, current, the problem with Twitter that we had with FedMessage was we had one account on Twitter that was sending all the message from the bus. And that's way more than Twitter can handle. So the account just got blocked. And something for Identica, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But then here the idea is like, it's not, we are not sending about <coughs> the, on the FedMessage account. We're sending on your account. So you can set a filter that says, every time I get a badge, it's, already, it's automatically tweeted to my account. So you don't want to say, well, every, every action which I do in Fedora, it gets tweeted because then you might end up with your account being blocked, which is fine, it's yours, so we don't really care. So you just have to be careful on the filters. But that, that's the idea. Every time I get a badge, it's automatically tweeted. Every time I do an update and the update is pushed to stable repository, then it's automatically tweeted. So, you know, we can add as many backend as we want and just imagination is the limit here. And sometimes technically it is. But this is one of the, the stuff that we are currently the, uh, working on. This is something which has reached production, I think, last week. And again, this, one of the idea here also is that it's not very specific. It's speaking. It's only you're only gonna get notification about what's happening in Fedora. But one of the things which I definitely want to enforce here is that you only need an open ID account. So Google provides it. Yahoo provides it. Uh, What's the name again? The uh, Steam provides an OpenID account. And you just need that to log in and set your preference, and then you can get, I'm an upstream. I work in that project. That project is in Fedora. I want to know everything which is happening on my project in Fedora. And you just go there, you log in, you say, well, I want to have it on IRC because it's Fedora. I don't really care. I don't want that in my mailbox. And you say, well, just IRC, everything that contains that package, I want to know about it. And you, get, and you get a nice notification on IRC that say, hey, I'm the Fedora notification service. Do you want to receive me a message from me? And then you click on a link, it's, a, it's activated, and from now on you get the firehose basically of everything which is happening to your project on Fedora. On the other cool stuff that we're working on, the idea is uh, we have an upstream monitoring system in Fedora, which is written by the guy who's sitting on the back and smiling now, <laughs> Till. And it's a wiki page where you basically say, well, this is my package. This is Python Flask, which I'm working on. Uh, this is my package. I want to know, this is the URL where you can find the information about the release. And this is the regular expression, which will help you to find the release. And then the, the current system does is that it 
it runs the, it runs the Chrome every day, and it's, it looks if there is a, a new release, and then it checks which version is in Fedora, and then it opens a Bugzilla ticket in the, if there is a new version available. The idea with this interface is that you restore your project, you give it the, the, the package name in the distribution of your choice, so because what we want here is something which is distribution agnostic, and you give it your package name, you give it the page where you can find the information, you give it the regular expression to, fi to find the version. And then, when, once a day, we run the cron job, and we send a message on the bus saying that this project has an update, and this project is packaged under, in Debian with that package name, in Fedora with that package name, and there is, an, uh, there is a new version there. And the idea is that, of course, this message is going to be sent on the Fedora Fed message bus, but also on the Debian Fed message bus. So it's not live yet, it's going to be soon, I hope. It's going to be on releasemonitoring.org. It's not related to Fedora, except that, well, we are working on it. And it's this diagnostic. It's, the idea is really just add your project there and see as a packager be informed when there is a new version available. And finally, one of the, yeah, I think that's the, the last uh, yes. cool stuff which I have. Uh, we have a Fedora mobile application which is developed in, for Android and was going to be natively in Android, where you can see, uh, so this is the, the, sh the screenshot of the statue of, so all the system in Fedora, when, when you have an outage, uh, when one of the servers is crashing, when we do an upgrade on one of the server, we update the statue. And then on your phone, you will be able to say, well, you're not getting any emails, but that's normal because the email system is down or you're not getting any notification on your phone on fan messages because the bus is done. But that's normal, we're working on it. At least we are aware. If it's written there and you see it and it's not working, Someone we are working on it. Switch. If it's not working and it's not there, contact us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that I think concludes, gives you a little bit of an idea of what we can do with the bus and everything that we've been working on. and. Yeah. We have so we have some contact information. Uh, if you want to talk about the bus, so there is the Fedora Apps uh, IRC channel on Freenode. Uh, there is a messaging SIG mailing list on list.fedoraproject.org where, um, I mean, uh, implementation of the bus is discussed. So, so if, if you want to discuss some things, if you want to report patch, don't hesitate to just drop by these yeah. two and we'll be there. And finally, of course, because you all want the badge by now, <laughs> there is a QR code and the URL, so just you can take the picture, you can scan it now, and just you enter in the badge and you get your first badge. Well, second badge, because for the first time, when the first time you log in and badge, you get a badge for it. So this is going to be the second. <laughs> and if you have any remaining questions, we'll be happy to answer. <laughs> Please. You great minds think alike. This is one of the ideas which I have. So the, the upstream the monitoring ID. Repeat the question. So yeah, sorry. The question is, if as more distro runs the bus, can we actually integrate that? And that's definitely one of the things which I have as an ID for the future. And I definitely want to get more in, more infrastructure to def deploy the bus, because then as an upstream, I could say, well, I want to know everything which is happening on all the downstream distribution. I, I'm working on this cool software. And I want to know what Ubuntu is doing with it, what Debian is doing with it, what Fedora is doing with it. But I don't want to go to Ubuntu, Debian.org, FedoraProject.org, or Gentoo.com, or I guess, <laughs> and have to find out on all these tools, all the different interfaces I, that I don't even know. So with the bus and the meta information, and that's something which, that's the next step that we have to work on yeah. with the Debian guys, is to be able to make an abstraction layer above the meta information that we can say, well, uh, a Koji build in Fedora is the same thing as the Debian build mm. there. It's the same thing as the Gen2 port, port uh, update portage. And then as an upstream, you could go to the page and say, well, give me all the information about my, my project on all the downstream distros that you can find. And then you have one central place to get all your information about all the downstream distros. So the question is, could we actually, on the release monitoring, could we have, uh, could the release monitoring have its own bus? That's something which I have been running. I don't know if it's something which is interesting or if it's overkill. I'm a bit, at the moment there is only two bus, so I don't know, uh, yeah. Is that, is that a bit overkill to have its own bus or is it interesting? 
it's something which we have to figure out. There was one question so there. So yeah, we have time for. Knuckno is actively maintained, yes. And the maintainer is just behind you, so beware. Well, he's just behind you, so if you have any question to him, I think you can just look behind you, <laughs> and he will be happy to answer them. Uh, regarding the question, you asked if, if we could add something in the API, but I'm not sure I understood that. Okay, well, that sounds, that's, that's not something which is able. So the question was, uh, there is a specific app which has a specific API to track release, no, release version, and if we could include that into Knuknu, and I think that's that should be doable. Something to speak with uh, to Till, with Till. But so I'm I've been working on the the web interface, and Till in the back is the one who is working on the actual logic end, yeah. to retrieve the information, get the regex, extract the, the version number. So I think our time's up. So thank you very much. Thank you, guys.